This is Linnea, and you're listening to Without Your Head, which I've done in a lot of movies. Have a good day, and stay scared. Welcome to the Station of Decapitation Without Your Head. I'm Nasty Neal. And that would make me terrible, Troy. Yes, and we're joined by the returning Eileen Dietz, Pazuzu herself. How are you doing? Oh, hey. Hey. Um, I'm doing great. I'm, you know, you know, I'm getting ready to go to Sundance tomorrow, and I'm probably three hours behind other yeah. things I have to do. One of which being, um, I have a PR person now. Her name oh. is Patricia Shika, and if anybody out there wants PR, she is absolutely the most amazing miracle I've ever seen. So she set me up for all this stuff up at Sundance. So one of the things I have to do is I got to, you know, get all of it and put it in a calendar. <laughs> That'll well, take an hour or two. Yeah, well, um, but she's awesome, absolutely though. amazing. I mean, if you guys want any PR or anybody else, I've never seen anything like that. Mm-hmm. You know, she's just amazing. Yeah. So I, that's, that's, that's where I'm at. That's all. And I, from what I understand from, uh, from other guests, sometimes it's very hard to find is someone who's, uh, who does a good job and is, a re- and is reliable. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's like anything, you know, like agents and stuff like that. But this woman, you know, we got together. She said, do you want me to work with you for Sundance? She also put me in a, uh, was it just, um, she shot a, um, um, a music video PSA mm-hmm. about donating blood. And I played a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. It's, it's a very funny spot about uh-huh. vampires and people who donate blood. Uh-huh. Um, but anyway, she just, you know, took this whole thing and ran with it. And, you know, I think I think like you guys, yeah. um, got it through Patricia, right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yep. And, uh, it's, you've been very active. All kinds of stuff yes. coming up. And, uh, Sundance, that's going to be exciting. Yes. Cold and exciting. <laughs> I prefer hot and exciting. Uh, uh-huh. I'm a hot person. Um, but I was just talking to Chris, my manager, and he's been there for the last four or five years. Mm-hmm. Um, and he said, you know, the cold, everybody talks about the cold. It's just what you deal with. But, and it's snowing. Where are you guys at? Uh, but we're both in Massachusetts, so we're we're, clo- we're used to the cold. Maybe not Yeah, cold it's pretty there, cold here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which part of Massachusetts I'm are on, you in? I'm on the Cape, on Cape Cod. <laughs> oh, I've been to Cape Cod. I did uh, one of my first summer stop jobs up there. Oh, really? Oh, it was crazy. Mm-hmm. It was a, a Leonard Melfi play, and three-quarters of the actor's studio came up there, along with Al Pacino and Jill Clayburg. May she rest in peace. And I think they were breaking up at the time, and for some reason, while well, I was very young and flirty and stuff, they all decided that I wanted their boyfriends and husbands. <laughs> <laughs> so they kept making all these faces behind me when I was on stage doing a monologue or something. Uh-huh. God, what a memory. I haven't thought about that in a long time. Uh-huh. Do you know whereabouts on the cave? Nope. No, all right. So. I probably could figure it out, but not <laughs> offhand now. Yeah, I, I thought the cave was the cave. Yeah, well, no, I'm in a place called Sandwich, which... This is an odd sound to the town, and there's Hyannis, Hyannis Ports, all different places. But, yeah, it's all different. Uh, I think a lot of pe- <laughs> some people might not know that you, uh, you know, you did theater. You did, that I was? That you did theater. Oh, yeah, no, I started out doing theater. You know, and, and the fact, um, if anybody wants to read my book, mm-hmm. Exercising My Demons, you will find out that I was doing a play and these agents came to see the play and asked me if I wanted to audition for The Exorcist. What what was it about, uh, you think, your performance in the play that they thought you'd be good uh, for The Exorcist? I was incredible. (laughs) (laughs) Well, they see, they they also needed someone, although I was not a double, Mm -hmm. so people like to call me a double, but they still did need somebody who was about the same size as Linda, who is 12. So I'm small, and they wanted someone who's strong and who could act. So that's what the, the audition notice was. Mm-hmm. And this play was uh, it was almost a one-woman play about this little girl that comes from Detroit to New York to find love, and she gets off the bus and she meets a pimp, but she doesn't know it's a pimp. And um, she's so in love with him, and she's so mortified, and she can't go back home because she's a runaway. So she starts losing her mind, and he brings her boys and girls, 
and um, which does not tell you anything about what this play is about because it's actually very lyrical and poetic. Mm-hmm. Um, and my character spoke to the audience a lot. It's a real nice play. Do you know what Joyce Carol Oates is? I, I do not. I'm sorry. Uh, she, she's written about boxes all her life. Um, and this was um, a lead up to one of her short stories. Uh, it wasn't really a play, but we took it and made it a play. When so, you, yeah, uh, I did a lot of theater. I did Steam Baths, Tony Perkins, mm-hmm. which was an nice. absolute joy. And um, I, I mean, I, we, be, we became friends, not huge friends, but we did become friends. And um, I enjoyed him very much. Mm-hmm. Now, when you did, uh, I know it's in your book, but when you did the... Uh, when you did the audition for The Exorcist, uh, like, uh, what kind of scenes did you, did they have the script, and what kind of things did you? Uh, did you... No, they wanted improvs. Oh, okay. They wanted. Uh, I went in there and I did improvisations, and um, when I actually did the improvisation, I actually played the part of the little girl and the demon at the same time, talking to each other. Oh wow! Such as. You wow, you big, you big. Mommy, mommy, help me, help me. You sow, I'm inside of you. Stuff like that. And um, the the prop people brought out a crucifix that was about two and a half feet long. It was hysterical. It was a paper mache crucifix. So we used that too. <laughs> <laughs> so where did that voice come from? Like, uh, was it? did you ever do it before? No, actually what I did is um, I couldn't figure out what a demon was like. None of us can, really. But I figured the closest I could get to were animals in the the wild, jungle animals. Mm -hmm. So I went and bought a book about all these jungle animals. And I closed there. I I lived in New York City at the time. And they always had those shades on the windows. So I pulled the shades. I lit a whole bunch of candles. And I just went, ah. You know, like a lion sound? Mm-hmm. Ah, ah, like that. And that's where the voice came from. <laughs> that, but you... most of the voice is Mercedes McCambers. And then Linda and I, were we filled in parts of it. But most of it was Mercedes McCambers. Mm-hmm. Uh, by, by the way, where can you get your book, Exercising My Demons? Um, the absolute best way to do it, um, don't do it on Amazon. Because... Uh-huh. Um, it's a crummy deal for me and you don't get it autographed. Hmm. So the best way to do it is most everybody's on Facebook, right? Oh yeah. So, um, uh, to go to Facebook, um, chat me up. I'm under Eileen Deeds. I can't quite make you a friend necessarily because I got 5,000 friends and 230 people waiting, Mm -hmm. which I hate. And I don't know why Facebook has to have a limit. What difference does it make? Mm -hmm. Um, and um, so that's the best way um, is to to chat me up on Facebook, and I'm going to kill you if you if it's for any other reason <laughs> except buying your book because uh-huh. then you can give me just send me a notifi- notification. You know? <laughs> um, but uh-huh. that's really the best way, and the book is twenty five dollars plus postage. Yeah, and um, you'll get it autographed any way you want, and if you're really nice, I might even put a quote in there, and that's the best way. So cool. And I also sell statues of Pazuzu and Pazuzu's head and uh, the original script of The Exorcist. I have a pillow with Pazuzu's head on it mm-hmm. um, and stuff like that. Uh, Captain Howdy's green pea soup. Um, and so it's kind of really fun. And my website is down, so the best you can really do, I think, is go to my fan page and yeah. see what's up there. Or just get in touch with me and I'll send you pictures of everything. Mm-hmm. By the way, where did the name Captain Howdy come from? Um, in the beginning of the movie, um, um, uh, Reagan is playing with her Ouija board mm-hmm. and, uh, her mom hears all these voices coming, uh, a voice coming. She said, honey, who are you talking to? And she said, mommy, I'm talking to Captain Howdy. Mm-hmm. And that's where it came from. Yeah. I just used a Ouija board, uh, for the first time, not, not that long ago. Uh, do you believe, do you believe in Ouija boards and, uh, possessions and, and whatnot? Um, I believe if you believe it, then it will happen. <laughs> um, I, I think we can bring a lot of things down ourselves. Uh, our thoughts control our lives. Uh-huh. Um, and 
I just don't want to mess around with stuff like that. Yeah. I don't know for sure. I don't know, you know, for sure about a lot of things, but uh, spiritually, but um, everything else I know everything about. <laughs> um, but why, why mess around with it? Mm-hmm. And it's another quick story that I did a movie. Um, what is it called now? I think it's called The Cabin of Somebody Foster. Um, and we were shooting up at Big Bear and California and everything was going great. And the, I got to tell you, walking on that, in the cabin on the set, I thought I was at a studio because all the guys worked for a big camera house. And man, they had cranes and cameras and all this equipment and everything was absolutely going great. And then the next scene they shot, she was supposed to throw a Ouija board into the fire mm-hmm. place. And number one, they really treated this stuff with some kind of really, you know, some kind of fire thing that would really go up and smoke. Mm-hmm. And um, she threw the Ouija board in there and her hair started to burn, not badly. And thank God they had, um, they had fire extinguishers right by her. So it wasn't bad, but she did get burned. And then the next thing that happened, they had two and a half feet of snow. So we couldn't even get to the set from the hotel. Mm-hmm. And so they couldn't shoot. And then they used all their money from the movie to bring all the equipment down the hill. Cause it's like a 20 minute climb up to a big bear yeah. and the snow. So they used all their money to get the equipment out and we couldn't, we, we didn't reshoot that thing. We started to, and then I think they had fires. I mean, anything you can imagine. And so they gave me a custom made Ouija board and they came over to my house a couple of weeks late and they said, Eileen, I know this sounds absolutely ridiculous, but everything's going wrong. I have to take that Ouija board back from you. I have to get it blessed and I have to throw it into the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> so they did. Um, and the producer said, you know, I don't know whether this is all true or not, uh-huh. but just in case. And then we finished shooting it about six months later. And all of a sudden John Savage was in it. Uh, all of a sudden I was supposed to be this apparition from the seventies, this like grandma type. And all of a sudden I turned into this <laughs> princess of the plushette, you know, which is the little thing you use on the Ouija board. Uh-huh. And one of the few times in my life I was in a film that they made me beautiful. Um, and actually I haven't seen it yet, but I mean, they went through hell and all because they threw that Ouija board in the fire. <laughs> But no, funny, huh? Yeah, that's pretty awesome. No, uh, I'm sure. I gave somebody a gift of a Ouija board because they made a movie called Unleashed, uh-huh. which was about Ouija boards and where they came from and everything. Mm-hmm. And they hung it in their office. And in the next eight months, they tried to make a movie in Europe. They, it fell apart. Everybody went broke. Everybody went bankrupt. Everybody in the family aren't even talking to each other anymore. Uh-huh. And I don't know if it was because of the Ouija board or not, but I'd feel really bad if it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you ever actually used one yourself? A Ouija board? Yeah. No. I, I mean, I, I play with it, but I, I never did in any seriousness. But I do have a Ouija board here in my house because I used to sell them. And um, there was this great company in Tennessee um, that made these custom custom made Ouija boards, you know, cause the ones you can buy in the store are mostly out of cardboard now yeah, and they're yeah. really creepy. Oh, yeah, the so I saved one, one yeah. cause I always wanted to make more and uh-huh. I do have one in my house and so maybe I should get rid of that, <laughs> but my life's pretty good. So yeah. 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 Annabelle, uh, cause I use, what, what, wait, excuse the expression, but what possessed you to play with the Ouija board? Well, yeah, uh, so Annabelle and I used it. Um, she believes, she not really believes, but kind of, I think more like you, like, uh, you know, maybe there's something to it. I don't believe that kind of stuff at all. And uh, But we used it, actually, I guess it was a couple of years ago. But then we used it again on Halloween this year in Salem at, uh, like, midnight or whatever. And uh, it, it, it it's weird because uh, I don't believe that stuff. But, uh, like, the first time we used it, we got a lot of answers. And they were all, like, really mundane stuff. And I would think, like, if you were making it up, even not intentionally, like, you, it would be something a lot more interesting than, like, like suppose like the guy said he was like a teacher and like there was just really yeah but the question the questions were yours you mean the answers were mundane yeah yeah the answers were you know like basic stuff which to me kind of seemed like there was more maybe actually something to it 
uh, since it was kind of just you know basic stuff. But this last time we like Halloween, I said, uh, I was just real quick, we started using it, and uh, and Abel was like, "Look behind you!" And as soon as we started using it, there was this big raccoon came up behind me and climbed up the tree. We were in uh, Salem, Massachusetts, and it sat in like uh, the branch, like right over my head behind me. It was very bizarre. <laughs> it is bizarre. That might have been a reincarnation of somebody you once knew. <laughs> Maybe so. My feeling is I don't walk under ladders, mm-hmm. and I have a black cat, so that doesn't really count. Um, but just, you know, I throw salt over my shoulder, just in case. Yeah. You know, no, it's not don't mess hurt around with, with the spirits. Right. And if there's nothing to it, it's not going to hurt anything, so why not? You know, the very beginning of my book starts that way. I went to see a, um, um, a psychic, a gypsy-type psychic person. And, um, I mean, true story. And I went to see her, and um, she she had this, like, accent, and she said, you are going to be surrounded by cameras and people, but beware, because something very bad could happen to you. Beware. And I went, yeah, right, and I walked out into the sunshine, and the next thing I knew, I was casting The Exorcist. So, I don't know. Yeah. Coincidence, maybe? <laughs> Now, I've always heard that they had a priest uh, bless the set every day on, on The Exorcist. Yeah, but, you know, that was, um, Billy Freakin is the least spiritual person in the whole world. Mm-hmm. So he only did it as a publicity thing. <laughs> right. But yes, they did. They had yeah. a priest come out and um, and bless the set. And, you know, people at least tell me, do you believe all that? Do mm-hmm. um, you believe everything that was going on? Do you believe in, and I said, it's the same thing. I don't know that it's not true, so why not? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? I mean, if you want to bless me, bless me. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not going to be anyway, right? The, now, uh, William Peter Bat, uh, Blatty passed away recently. Uh, did you ever... I know, and he died a day early. Isn't that sad? Uh, he day... died on the 12th. He should have died oh, on Friday the 13th. the 13th. Yeah, that would have been perfect timing. <laughs> I know. A, Come on, Billy. Yeah, you could have. Yeah. We actually got to be very close um, in the later years of his life. Oh, really? So, uh, not to talk I about mean, that was, that's that's actors speak for very close. I mean, what happened is he found me on Facebook, mm-hmm. and he said, um, "Eileen, I, I'm sorry it took me 35 years for me to tell you that your scenes were my favorite scenes in the whole movie." So then we started corresponding, and he sent me a copy of his book. Um, obviously autographed first edition. I sent him a copy of my book and I sent him a little joke I have about writers and stuff. It's kind of a writer is sitting there obviously with his manager in the middle of the desert with a table with books on and he looks at him and says, boy, you must be the worst manager in the whole world. <laughs> um, so I sent him a copy and we just corresponded and see what was going on and stuff like that. And that, that was That was really nice. Yeah. Because, you know, he and Billy Freakin didn't get along at all. I didn't they, know that. They really did, didn't like each other. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, Freakin really wouldn't listen to things. And Blatty says that, um, obviously, The Exorcist is an amazing, excellent, terrific film. Mm-hmm. But it could have been a masterpiece if uh, if they had just listened to him. Mm-hmm. So I think a lot of writers probably feel that way. But um, there were certain things he wanted, like... You know, Kitty Wynn, you always, you always had this, the spiritual and the demonic um, going on. And Kitty Wynn, who played the secretary, she was a spiritual person that was around. And they caught practically everything she did. And she, you know, she almost has a very small part in the movie now. Mm-hmm. Did you know so, they, you know, they just went to the... Um, it's, it's funny, because I happened to be sitting on the bed for some crazy reason when Billy Freakin was talking to somebody... And they said, yeah, we're just going to go for the grossness, just go for the vomiting scenes and that scene and that scene. And, you know, forget the uh, anything that's subtle or uh, thing. And um, I mean, Bill Blatty didn't want the movie to end the way it did, where it was so obvious, mm-hmm. uh, a demon, because the eyes go into Jason Miller before he goes out the window. Mm-hmm. And so Billy freaking wanted that, but Blatty really didn't want that, because if you do read the book, the book is much more a question of whether Reagan was really crazy or she was totally possessed. Mm-hmm. And it, it makes it interesting. But the way they did the movie, obviously, is she was obviously totally, totally possessed. 
Uh, what was uh, what was his autobiography like? Freakins? Yeah. I only Bl- read Bladdy, I only sorry, read the Bladdy. part about me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I only read the part about me. <laughs> I'd probably do the same. You know? but <laughs> which wasn't you know it wasn't kind. He didn't like Mercedes McCain with your man hmm. because um, he honestly felt that because of us were the reasons the film didn't win the Oscars. Mm-hmm. Well. And Linda Blair hasn't spoken to me in 40 years because she thinks I'm the reason she didn't win the Oscar, which is kind of true in a way. But it had nothing to do with me. I didn't do anything except the work I did. And when I got to L.A., um, I, somebody, I know that somebody, it was a girl I knew in New York, uh, I had an acting class with. And she had a friend who wrote for the L.A. Times. And she gave the story to the biggest um a uh, gossip columnist at the time. And um, she ran the story that there was this girl that was from New York claiming to have been in The Exorcist. And then the shit hit the fan. Mm-hmm. Did did that change how you felt about the movie at the time? when? Uh... Oh, yeah. 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 For, I didn't even... Um, I, for uh, They hurt me so badly because um, I came out to L.A. and I had like three agents from New York City and they had three agents that wanted to sign me. And things were a lot different then. And the studios had a lot more power, right? Mm-hmm. And so as soon as uh, the Hollywood Reporter ran the story, like who was really did who really did this and who really did that, and Variety, and I mean it was the biggest story in in, in California. Um, and I had nothing to do with that, but they felt that um, if you, I mean, if you read the book, there's just an incredible story. When I walked into this bungalow at Warner Brothers, because they invited me to come out to California, mm-hmm. and I was sitting there, and the sun was shining, and I was like, oh, my God, I was on a movie lot. Oh, you know, like, yeah. wow. And he walks out the door. He looks at me, and he says, you'll never work in this town again, wow. and turns around and leaves. Wow. And the sun went, the sun went away. You know, and the guy who I told my story to, this guy, Dan Boubier, the writer, mm-hmm. is an absolute genius. I mean, he the way he wrote that scene um, and other scenes, it just makes you want to laugh and cry and uh, everything. It was horrible. It was horrible. I, I walked out of there and the, I was scared to death because mm-hmm. I believed him. Mm-hmm. You know, and here's this little seven-year-old child who, I mean, had been ever since I was seven that wanted nothing more to be an actress. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, he just shattered all of that. And oh, all these rumors went around that I was suing Warner Brothers, which, of course, I wasn't. Uh, Mercedes McCambridge did. And, um, you know, people just thought I was, uh, I'd step on the toes of a child in order to get ahead and... I mean, you you could do drugs in this town or, you know, sleep around or do anything else, yeah. but you can't mess around with a child. Uh-huh. And, of course, I you know, I never would do that. I'd be the first person to tell you that, you know, Linda, um, Linda, you know, she played Reagan. The medical scenes and all that kind of stuff were absolutely mm-hmm. really intense. I never wanted to take anything away from her. Yeah. So, when so was, I don't know if that answers your no, question, but anyway, no, I, think it definitely, yeah, um, definitely I finally does. got an agent and, um, well, I actually, I walked into a bungalow where they were, I didn't know you couldn't walk on a set. I mean, in a, uh, into a studio lot. And I just walked over to where they were shooting, uh, Planet of the Apes. And I walked in there and I said, I want to be an ape. <laughs> and Marvin Page, who, uh, rest his soul. Um, he said, okay, read for me. And I read for the part of an ape. He called me and I got the job. So then I started working again and I did Helter Skelter and I did a couple of television shows and then the same casting person cast me in General Hospital. Mm -hmm. So then everything turned around. But for a while there, it was horrible. I was, you know, and it was like, I suppose someone who's on trial for murder and can't get anybody to believe that they never killed anybody. Yeah. And when would you say, like, uh, you were able to... Uh, like enjoy that you were in part of the exorcist again? Um, um, somewhere around the eighties when I was doing general hospital and stuff. And yeah. then, you know, things started changing and it wasn't until 2000 that I started doing horror conventions. Mm-hmm. So I've been doing them for about 16 years yeah. and I met Chris Rowe, my manager and still is my manager. Mm-hmm. And I didn't even know what horror conventions were. 
And they told me, you know, a, a friend of mine, um, I walked into this spiritual place that I go to, a spiritual group, and Dee Wallace was there. And she was running around. I said, where are you going? And she said, oh, I do these horror conventions and da-da-da-da-da. And I went, oh, wow. And then I had dinner with a friend of mine. And he said, do you know your pictures on the cover of Fangoria magazine? And I said, no, I didn't know that. And your pictures on the cover of a book. I said, I didn't know that either. And then I ran to Dee again. And she said, do you want to meet my manager? And that was the first thing I knew about horror conventions. And I started doing them. And Chris worked really hard because he had to, you know, let people know who I was. Mm -hmm. And everybody would go, I didn't know that she didn't do all that work. And um, that, that that's when it, that's when I really started feeling comfortable with it again. Yeah. I was so hurt. I mean, it's so amazingly hurt that anybody would do this to me. Mm -hmm. um, and so sorry that I even came out to California because mm -hmm. I figured if I'd stayed in New York, then... None of that would have happened, and they just would have brought me out to California to shoot the heretic. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a, a big roller coaster there to you know get the role in this big movie, do it, and then like kind of all that kind of falls out. You can't you can't like really enjoy that you're part of it, and then uh, and then it's oh, it was later, the worst. People, it was now, absolutely the worst. You know now fans and, can uh, can appreciate it and that that you were part. Yeah, of well, it. they ended up buying my film from the Exorcist and putting it in the heretic. Because they hired two other people to play the demon and fired both of them, mm -hmm. which I went, wow, I didn't know I, I was that good. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then when they wanted uh, an actor can negotiate uh, the price for when someone buys your film from one project to another, mm -hmm. um, kind of like um, the vomiting scene in the Burbs, um, <laughs> and you can you can say no, uh -huh. no, you can't use that. But by at that time, I just said, just take it, take it. Yeah. Pay me what you want. You know what I mean? Uh huh. Definitely. So, uh, but what what movie do you have uh, coming up here for the uh, for Sundance? Lake Alice. So anyway, well, you know, yeah, that's just a little taste to all you people out there. If you really want to delve into what went on and what was happening and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff, then you have to buy my book. But I am planning to make an audio book. Oh, awesome. It's uh yeah I, I really like audiobooks. It's kind of a weird story. Why? Is because I had very bad eyesight until I had LASIK. I had wore glasses since I was six, and like I was legally blind when I. And so I like. Can the you wait, wait, wait? Can you uh -huh. say that whole paragraph again? Sure. I didn't get it. Okay, so I had very bad eyesight since I was six. Um, okay. And I was uh, like legally blind in one eye, and I twenty sixty vision in the other eye with with my glasses, and that made it actually hard to like read like a book, or really do much of anything. And so I, I like the audiobooks. Um, a few, uh, uh -huh. I guess it was about, I guess it's longer than I think now, probably about eight years ago, I had LASIK surgery and I can see, mm -hmm. but I still was in the, the, ha the habit of listening to the audiobooks. So, uh, especially if you have a good reader. So I'm looking forward to uh, listening to the audio version. Yeah, it'll probably be about, you know, like six or eight months um, um, before I actually finish it. Because mm -hmm. I guess, so maybe not. Maybe I'll do it in about three months or four months. Yeah. But, um, I think it'd be fun, and the whole book's written in the first person. Mm -hmm. So, um, what what was the experience uh, like itself of you know uh, getting all these memories back together for the book? You know, to revisit out everything. It was it was it was very. You asked me very interesting questions, by the way. Thank you. It was very difficult, and um, what I um, Dan, the author, lives in Connecticut, so I had to call him. Um, I couldn't call him any later than five o'clock because he is, you know, he has a baby and blah, blah, blah stuff. I, mean, I was very scared and, um, that I was really, really scared. And I, I didn't know if, uh, you know, Warner brothers or, um, I can't think of the name of the people. They just produce the exorcist on television. Um, that if they were going to come after me again or they were going to try and sue me. Mm -hmm. um, so the book is very tame, actually. Um, I don't, uh, it's not a book where I'm seeking revenge or saying bad things about anybody. I don't say any bad things about anybody in the book, mm -hmm. but it, it was very, it was very scary. But I think if any, if it occurred to anybody, they probably said, well, we're not going to do anything because that'll just give her publicity. And I've worked for Warner Brothers after that. Probably everybody that was around when that all happened in 74, half of them are probably dead. 
<laughs> and they're not working at Warner Brothers anymore. Right. right. Uh, by the way, actually, have you seen the uh, the TV show? I have seen it. Uh, do you have any thoughts on it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to share those thoughts, or maybe not? I don't know. Well, you know, no, I don't mind really sharing them. I, I never want. I didn't want to sound like sour grapes or anything. Because I, I actually wanted it to be very good, mm -hmm. um, because it, it would only help me in the long run, right? That's I mean, they didn't true. call me to be in it, yeah. but um, then, plus, you know, new. new have people you seen discover. it? Uh, I saw the first uh, few episodes. And why did you stop? Because it, it didn't really uh, interest me. Well, did you see the part, um, the reveal, the big reveal? And I'm not going to say what it is because, um, you know, maybe a lot of your people are going to watch it. I probably um, you didn't. Know. I should go back because I, th I think I did miss something big because I remember when I, right after I stopped watching it, I remember seeing people say there was something big. Well, after we get off the phone, I'll tell you what it was. All right. But um, it was, I thought it was ridiculous. I thought it was really stupid. Uh -huh. And, um,. I'm sorry, I didn't particularly like Gina Davis. And um, then her mother comes on, and, um, you know, her mother is the mother of Ray. I don't know, they just got very convoluted. Mm -hmm. I like the, I like the, not the daughter that got possessed, I like the other daughter. Mm -hmm. I, the, the one I, I like they, the, they, uh, People are afraid of it, and they keep saying it's the curse of the exorcist that they can't get a really big hit anymore. Uh -huh. But for some reason, they just don't get good scripts. Mm -hmm. The uh, the you know, like the begin, exorcist the beginning or exorcist the prologue. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I mean, I, really? This, <laughs> yeah, I've always. I, I mean, I said this on the show, not just because you're here, but uh, I don't. I don't think any like exorcist, any movie about exorcism since The Exorcist has has really been that great. And I think it's. I don't know. I think it's just you can never really top The Exorcist, or none of them have. So then they kind of all kind of seem, you know, n not as good. But yeah, well, once again, it, it starts with the script. I really like the exorcism of uh, Audrey Rose, but that's not really about exorcism. Mm -hmm. That's really about the, the court trial. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I just said this in an interview that I just did, um, that, you know, uh, even the Bible says, first there was the word, and uh, I think first it was light, and then there was the word, or something like that. <laughs> and Shakespeare said the play's the thing. You have to have a script. You can't make a movie without a script. Mm -hmm. And I don't care, in my opinion, I don't care what actors in it. I don't care, you know what I mean, if it's Brad Pitt or whomever it was. You can't make a movie without a script. Mm -hmm. And they just have never come up with a good script. How you doing? This is Lance Hendrickson, and you're listening to Without Your Head. I also I have the um, 16 minute film version of a movie called David Holstein's Diary mm -hmm. that I shot that's actually um, they teach it in universities and film classes all over the country mm -hmm. uh, it's a very famous movie within that, that genre because mm -hmm. um, it's the first movie anybody ever made where um, uh, Kit Carson I think he just died too um, broke the fourth wall mm-hmm and I uh, actually talked to the audience because he wanted to put his life on film. And then he wanted to be able to stop it and make it go uh, or go backwards or go forwards. And he could control his life that way. And I played his girlfriend. So um, now I'm actually selling that. So if there's anybody out there that's interested in buying, um, I don't know how I ended up with it. But if somebody <laughs> interested in buying a 60 millimeter film print um, from the early 70s, that's in still very, very good shape. Yeah. Um, Facebook means. Definitely. I think <laughs> if you find the right person, uh, I think there's definitely an audience out there. Yeah, yeah a friend of mine says that there are actually collectors. Yeah. And um, I thought somebody was going to, they never did it, the Beverly Cinema down here. Um, uh, Quentin Tarantino um, took over that theater. And oh, he will only show film. He won't show anything that's digital. Oh, okay. And I thought, I thought they were going to look at it, but whatever happened, they didn't. So one of these days, if before I sell it, yeah. I'm going to see if he wants to run it down there. That'd be sweet. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that'd be awesome. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a very famous movie. Mm -hmm. So, well, let's talk about that at, at another time, because I do have some very interesting stuff that I'd like to get rid of. Yeah, definitely. That, uh, uh, we go to a theater. Uh, it's in uh, Boston, um, and they show, uh, I used to talk about film, is they show uh, almost all 35-millimeter film. 
and uh, you know they have like midnight movies every weekend, and it's a lot of fun to go and see the uh, to see the old movies and the original thirty five millimeter on the big screen because it's, it's it really does look different. Yeah. Oh yeah. You Did know? you see The Exorcist there, Neil? Yeah, actually, yeah. Actually, That's yeah, too cool. The Exorcist, that was uh, it was several years ago, but yeah. I think it was one of the first times Annabelle and I met in person when we went to see The Exorcist, yeah. It was interesting, though, because I went to a place called um, Bormont. I think I pronounced it right. Bormont in the U.K. Mm-hmm. Uh, last summer, and they did a screening of The Exorcist in this little seaside town. It's like... Um, um, 100 miles outside of London. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, for some reason, the only way, I think their their little theater out there um, only does film. So I saw it on film, and I hadn't seen it on film in a long time, and it really does make a difference. Yeah. Yeah, it, it does, it seems, for most movies, or any movie, really, and plus being on the big screen. And, and uh, it is too bad so many people watch stuff. On, I, I couldn't imagine what, I can watch on your TV and your computer, but... Uh, people who watch like movies on their cell phone. I don't see how you can. Oh really God! Try that. Yeah. <laughs> we have a, a projector, and um, my husband Thomas uh, created this screen that goes over one of our walls, and it's life size. Oh, nice! It's as big as some of the small theaters that mm-hmm. we have here. Mm-hmm. Um, it's absolutely like we watch a lot of sports on there. Yeah. Um, it's nothing like watching a football game on a life-size screen. Yeah. Um, or baseball. Actually, baseball looks really interesting up there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, we run movies. So um, that works, but I can't imagine seeing a movie on a phone. No. What kind of movies are you interested in? You know, as to watch yourself. <laughs> as, as being... Good ones. <laughs> <laughs> well, that narrows it down. You know what I really want to see? Uh-huh. I want to see the autopsy of Jane Doe. Yeah, I, d- I haven't seen that either, and I've heard nothing. I heard things great about things it. Yeah. about it. Mm-hmm. it does I like really- good horror films, yeah. but I can't really mention. I, I mean, like, I don't know how many. I'd have to think about horror films that I've really enjoyed, like mm-hmm. in the last year or last couple of years. Yeah, I, like- I like Mama. <laughs> okay, yeah, and uh, I like Don't Breathe last year. I thought that was that was very good. I haven't seen that. Okay, yeah, I did like the one Annabelle. Which I was surprised, but I, again, I oh, saw yeah. that at home. I didn't pay $11 or $14 to go see it. Mm-hmm. And I think that, um, not that it's all about money, but I think I see a lot of movies at Screen Actors Guild. They have mm-hmm. um, a film society, and you get to see a movie every other weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think you feel one way about that. You feel another way if you watch it at home or you buy a DVD for, you know, yeah. um, or if you go to the movies and pay fourteen dollars, if you play fourteen dollars in the movies, you better be good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then you you feel you feel ripped off. It, the 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 one thing uh, I always feel at least at least I can come on the show if it's really bad and talk bad about the movie. But uh, so it's it's not a total loss. That's how I look at it. But uh, yeah. You uh, wait, wait, bad. wait. You talk badly about what? No. If if I if I went to see a ba- if I went to see a movie and I paid for it, it's very bad. I always think, of, well, at least I can now talk bad about the movie on on this show, so it's not a total loss. That's that's how I look at it. But uh, yeah, you do feel bad if you spend, you know, fourteen or fifteen dollars, and it's yeah, uh, it's not fourteen or fifteen; it's thirty yeah, if you're well, a couple, people, you're married exactly. or something. Yeah. And if you have kids, then you know you take two kids, four people to the movies. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like insane. Yeah. So, you know, and then the you know they have kids prices up to like three, three mm-hmm. years old, and then you pay an adult price. It's insane. Mm-hmm. The world is insane. Uh, I I think what I have to do in my later life is I I'm going to keep a notebook and I'm going to write down the movies I really liked and the movies I don't like. Uh, I love La La Land, by the way. I haven't seen that one either, but I've uh, that's another one I've uh, seen all good reviews for. Oh, it's uh, it just makes you happy. Mm-hmm. Um, it just makes me happy. I just think it, it's so well done. But most of the other movies that are up for um, for, up for awards, I just didn't think much of it. And you know, this movie, um, um, Manchester by the Sea, mm-hmm. that everybody's going nuts over. Mm-hmm. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> eh. Yeah. And Moonlight is the same thing, except Moonlight, I think, is better than than that. So, 
I don't know. And it's not that I'm, you know, particularly particular. Mm -hmm. You know what I saw on the airplane? I saw bad moms. I just came back from New York. That was uh -huh. funny. I really liked that. And then I saw Woody Allen's Cafe Society, and uh -huh. I like both of those. Troy's a, Troy here is a big fan of Woody Allen. Yeah, I love I'm sorry. The what? Cafe Society, I really liked, too. Yeah, wasn't that fun? Yeah. Lots of jazz, but I, I yep. just thought it was fun. It's a Woody Allen movie, and it, it was fun. And so what are your favorite movies of the year? Hmm. I'm trying to think of what I saw last. Well, I, I know. I, I, I know. That's what I can't remember either. And I go to the movies just about every other week uh -huh. at the Screen Actors Guild, and I just can't remember. Mm -hmm. And I, I did have a. Uh, it was my lot last my lost summer because I was in the a hospital, then I was in rehab, and then I was in back in the hospital. So, uh, so there was like three or four months I, I didn't see anything besides Netflix on my uh, laptop. Wow. That's really terrible. <laughs> yeah. How about TV shows? Do you watch The Walking Dead? Yeah, I watch Walking Dead. I think there's a lot of great TV shows in the last 10 years, like uh, ever since... There the are so years. many TV shows out there now that I can't even begin to watch them all. Yeah, and actually, I've never watched Walking Dead. Yeah, I know it's tough to try to keep track of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know people say, Eileen, you haven't watched The Walking Dead? No. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was very talky. When I first started watching it, it was just a lot of talk, da 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 da, da. But I did like Strange Things. I love, yeah, I love Strange oh, Things. Yeah. I thought that, um, that's great. Um, there's also... Westworld's uh, great on, uh, yeah, Westworld's on really HBO. Uh-huh. But Stranger Things is really good. Uh, Black Mirror is really good. That's on Netflix. Um, it's kind of... Yeah, like, I heard something about that. Yeah, it's sort of like Twilight Zone, and it's really heavy on, like, social and political uh, commentary, you know, but set within science fiction. Um, hmm. Yeah, that one's very good. I really like this movie, and I've been trying to think of the name of it. A woman goes to this really secluded uh, kind of manor place mm -hmm. out uh, somewhere in the U.K., and the family take, has this doll that they consider their son. Oh, You know boy. what I'm talking about? Boy. I believe that's called The Boy. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I really like that. Yeah, I, I I wanted to go see that at the time, but, you know, I actually have not seen that one yet. But uh, it looked really yeah. good from the from the trailer, I thought. Even Thomas liked it. And he said, oh, my God, I mean, you dragged me to see another horror <laughs> film. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, boy, that was really good. Uh, and we, we, actually, I don't think we went out to see it. I think that we, I don't know how we saw it. Hmm. No, no. Well, we usually go to see two or three movies at a time. So we probably went to see something else and then saw that as a second film. Yeah. So uh, you said about... Anyway. Mm -hmm. well, I was going to say you said about being in New York for... Uh, it was a macabre uh, fair film fest. Uh, how did you get involved in that? Because you're, you're the ambassador. Um, Don't know. In fact, I was going <laughs> to ask Elsie. I couldn't remember. Uh, I thought you were going to ask us. Uh, I guess she... <laughs> No, I think that she, uh, um, I've been going there for four years, four or five years. We were trying to figure it out um, over the weekend. Um, and the first time, I think she just called Chris and said, we'd like to have you down there. Mm -hmm. And I've watched the, I just watched her grow, you know. I mean, but so did Sundance. So did Comic-Con. They, they both started really small. Mm -hmm. And so I've watched them grow. And, and, and grow from this motel to um, where they are now. And now it's just like a family affair. Mm -hmm. uh, and they just decided I was the ambassador. I don't know what that means <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But, um, it's a good title. You know, like when, when, hmm? I just said it's a, it's a good title, so run with it. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> I have a plaque, too. Oh, nice. Um, but many of the people there and the volunteers, you know, we've gotten to know each other. And it's really kind of like a family reunion. Mm -hmm. uh, how is uh, how's Elsie doing? Because uh, I know her. Uh, um, at bit. this moment in time, she's doing really, really well. Mm -hmm. um, that all the tumors seem to have, if they haven't disappeared, they seem to not even be in remission. Mm -hmm. That they, they seem to have shrunk. Mm -hmm. And she had them, uh, you know, uh, uh, she had like three or four tumors on her body, different parts of her body, mm -hmm. and they seemed to have shrunk. She was great, and then unfortunately. 
you know, I guess being wintertime or everything, you know, 50% of the people there all got sick and she yeah. got sick, which isn't good for you if you're, t- you're doing chemo and yeah, stuff. Yeah. But I think she's okay now, but she was amazing for the banquet and stuff like that. She She's an amazing woman. Mm-hmm. I mean, we didn't even say, uh, she had breast cancer and she had uh, a double mastectomy about four years ago. No, it must have been longer than that. That's six years ago. And it came back. Mm-hmm. But then when it came back, it spread. Yeah. So, um, but she's, you know, she, she's going to do this. Even last year we said, okay, we're planning the, you know, another festival in 2017, but who knows? Mm -hmm. And there she was. She's a great lady. Yeah. A great lady. Mm -hmm. Uh, was there any standout, uh, films? How many of the, do you get to see a lot of the movies there? But that's the problem, because I usually bring stuff to sell. Right. So it's always a conflict if I'm going to sit at my table mm-hmm. um, or go see films. And then I generally go see films that the filmmakers tell me about. Mm-hmm. They say, you know, I mean, they literally say, I mean, would you come down and see my film? And then I do. But I don't actually, you know, like go through the schedule and figure out what I want to see. And I saw two very, very good films. And, um, and so that's always fun. Mm-hmm. And, you know, then you stay in touch sometimes with the filmmakers. One of them lives out here in Encino. Um, and um, it was great. I had a ball. And then they throw this great banquet. So anybody who's listening out there that lives in the tri-state area, Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, um, come on down next year. It's really fun. And it's like... Um, it's like a family affair, you know, like everybody gets to know everybody and everybody has uh, a silly time with each other and they have a big banquet and they have a horror fashion show and they have these belly dancers that come back every year that probably top 200 pounds on the scale, but they're hysterical. <laughs> and so it's just fun. Uh, yeah, I would definitely like to go sometime. And they make me the most insane birthday cake. I'm going to I'm going to send you a picture of it. All right, um every awesome. year cuz my birthday is the 11th. Okay. Um, oh, that's perfect. And so they made this insane birthday cake with the face of death on it with huge <laughs> fingers and hands. It's insane. Um but I really anybody in the tri state area it's called the Macabre Fair, M A C A B R E Fair, F A I R E. And um you know, come and down see it. Yeah. And also, look for this movie on God at Sundance. This is commercial time, I guess. Um, it's called Lake Alice. And uh-huh. It's a thriller. Um, and um, it takes place in the cold of Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. But it's a really good thriller, a out, la out of, out of Alfred Hitchcock type story oh, nice. or, or something like that. Mm-hmm. The trailer looks really cool. And I did another movie called Assholes that people should look for, <laughs> except that it's A, Star, Star, Hole. You know, I think that's almost finished, and um, you know things are crazy. I'm going to do another movie called Sarah, which I think is a really funny name for a movie. But I shoot that at the beginning of February, mm-hmm. so, and I'm playing. I don't. I haven't read the script yet. I'm going to read it on the plane, <laughs> but I know I play a schizophrenic. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> well, it seems like uh, you've, you have a lot of uh, a lot of roles lately. Uh yeah. I think what's happening is people write a script and they say, we need a middle-aged woman. Let's get Irene. She'll work cheap. Because, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Dee Wallace and Adrian Barbeau and all those people were all about the same age. Mm-hmm. But they probably charge more money than I do. Because I just love to work. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I mean, I get paid good money. Like when I did Constantine, I got paid really well when I did Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. I got paid really well. Um, so then that allows you to do these indie films that you just get to play great parts. Mm-hmm. It, was like Alice actually filmed in like outside? Well, not outside, but was it really filmed in real snow and was it cold? It was 10 degrees below zero. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, we had leg chill. warmers and hand warmers. The crew was much in much worse shape because... Uh-huh. The crew was outside all the time, practically, and we would go inside and warm up between takes. And you know, I was lying in the snow at one point, and they they put down a, um, um, uh, um, you know, those blankets, the storage blankets. Um, so that was there, and they put the snow on top. They took very good care of me, and it wasn't windy, mm-hmm. which was really nice. Because mm-hmm. I think it's the wind that's worse than the cold. 
I yes, I agree 100 percent with that. Which brings me to the set of The Exorcist that they kept at about three, uh, three five degrees, uh-huh. so that the you know the vapor would come out of your mouth. Mm-hmm. That's in the book too. Yeah, that seems like a running theme with you. Is uh, you always end up cold, in cold weather. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. But, yeah. uh, um, horror, horror in the cold. Mm-hmm. Or a recurring thing. I much rather be when we go camping. It's like 105 degrees, <laughs> but we're camping off a lake uh-huh. um, outside of Laughlin, Nevada, and that's fine with me. I like the heat. Yeah, I like the heat. <laughs> and on that word, if I don't pack. Yes. Start packing and um, put that calendar together for Sundance. Mm-hmm. Then I'm going to be in big trouble because I'm catching an 8 a.m. plane tomorrow no. morning. All right. So it's been uh, it's been wonderful to have you back on, and I hope we have you Wait. back again. Oh yeah. I get, I'm a pretty good guest because you don't have to worry about you know what what you're going to say or if I'm going to say <laughs> anything because right? I just talk a lot. Uh, I like to tell stories. Those are our favorite guests. Yeah. We just kind of get the ball rolling exactly. and they run with yeah. it. Yeah. Trust me, we've had yes. beef, we've had the opposite and it, it's much better to have someone who talks a lot. Oh yeah. As opposed to you ask what I think is a good question and they say, yep. <laughs> oh, what, what, who's with you? Is his name Todd? Troy. His name? Troy. 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 Mm-hmm. I haven't heard you say a word. I just kind of like listening to your stories. I uh, kind of sit back and, yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to do my quick commercial. If you're interested <laughs> in my book, if you're interested in buying any of this stuff. Um, and if you're interested in buying anything, and uh, you, can, you can also email me at Eileen at EileenGeeks.com because mm-hmm. I can just delete it if it gets crazy. <laughs> 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 but Facebook is probably the best way um, to get a hold of me if you want to get a hold and if we've inspired you to read this book. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll definitely be on the show again after I do the audio book if you'll have me. Definitely, yeah. Oh, yeah, that. that sounds great. Yeah. Okay, and then, you know, I should do this. Uh, the movie up at Sundance is Blake Alice and produced by a great guy named Scott Miller. And um, his sister, actually, was 23, oh. and she wrote the screenplay. And the screenplay is so good is that I didn't know who the serial killer was until I finished it. Mm-hmm. I swear to you. So he did that, and a, a really great director named uh, Ben Milliken. Um, so that's my little um, commercial for them. Cool. Oh, Lake that's... Alice. Look for it in your local. Well, we don't have any local stores anymore. Look for it, and it's not out yet. But look for it on <laughs> Netflix. <laughs> You'll find <laughs> or it on Directv. I mean, it's much better than than some of the stuff they have on late night Directv. I don't know where that stuff comes from. <laughs> All right, well, we'll let you get to a packing, and uh, thanks again. It's been awesome. Okay, and thank you for having me. You're very welcome. Thank you very much. Have okay, bye-bye. Bye. Enjoy bye. Uh, Sundance. Hey, this is Kevin Pollack, and you're listening to WithoutYourHead.com, but I guess you knew that, didn't you? Unless, of course, you lost your head.